Welcome to Signal and System Lecture Series. Here in this session, I'll be going to explain stable and unstable system. And what is stable system? So let us try to understand that first. So see, system is says to be stable if it produces bounded output to bounded input. So if it is following this condition, bounded bounded output with respect to bounded input in that case one can say given system is stable so let us try to understand this with one example so it will be more clear so see for example if you have been given with input x of n and your output is y of n and if relation is this y of n is equals to x square of n then See, we need to give bounded input first. So every time, whenever you are checking this condition for stability, you will have to give step input. That is standard bounded input. So I'll place step input. So X of N, that is standard bounded input, that is step input U of N. So if you place this in given system, then your output will be y of n is equals to u of n whole square and square of step signal that will be step signal only so it will be u of n so this is what bounded output so here bounded output is appearing so system is stable let us have few more cases if i give you y of t is equals to 2x square t plus x t so again we need to give step input so x t is equals to u t that we need to give so as if you give this condition you will be getting y t is equals to 2 times of u square of t plus u t u square of t that is u t only so 2 u t plus u t so that is actually 3 u t. So here 3 u t that is even bounded output. So here bounded input to bounded output is appearing. So we can say system is stable. Let us have few more cases so it will be more clear. If you have output y of t and that is integration of x of t. So if you have y output y of t that is integration of x of t. So here if I place x of t is equals to u of t here. So in that case now your output will be y of t is equals to integration of u of t and integration of u of t that is ram signal r of t ram signal is not bounded ram signal is not bounded so output is unbounded so we can say system is unstable now see there are so many other ways by which even we can identify whether given system is unstable or unstable and in control engineering i have covered so many topics by which we can identify whether given system is stable or not and even by having pole zero analysis we can identify given system is stable or not like see when you plot poles and zeros from system response over here there will be real part over here there will be imaginary right now 
if roots if roots are there in this right hand side so if poles are there then one can say system is unstable if poles are there in right hand side region then one can say system is unstable if poles are there in left hand side this is what left hand side say so if poles in left hand side system will be stable system and if poles are there on imaginary axis if poles are there on imaginary axis then system will be critically stable so this is what we can analyze based on poles and zeros so to identify poles and zeros we need to do impulse response of system and from that we can have poles and zeros of system and then based on poles and zeros even we can identify whether given system is stable or not so stability is not depending on zeros stability is always depend on poles only so we need to see what is the position of poles and if position of poles are there in the region of lhs of that pole zero plot in that case one can say system is stable on axis it will be critically stable and in rhs region right hand side region poles position will indicate system is unstable so this is how even we can identify this in control engineering i have explained stability by using root locus routh hermist nyquist so you can study that subject even from my playlist that will be even helpful to you thank you so much for watching this video